What's up, everybody? Jensen Cummings here. Thank you for tuning in on this Friday. Exciting show. We just got to wrap a little bit. I'm pumped up to talk with Diane De La Cruz, who is the chef of the Hard Rock Stadium in Miami, Florida. Thank you for taking some time. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful Friday. It's awesome. I don't know. It's beautiful in Miami today. In the it's, it's already hot here in Denver as well. It's going to be a good day. Very, very. We have uh, that humidity here, but, you know, yeah. here you, you have a beautiful sun outside. Probably by 3.30 we'll have a storm going. But it's so it Of matter. course. <laughs> Classic Miami for sure. So we're going to talk about some fun stuff. We're going to talk about the Super Bowl. We're going to talk a little bit about what's happening within your team right now and, and how you've done a great job of keeping people motivated and excited through all of this. But I want to start with some backstory for you. Give us a little bit of your background, the origin story, where you're from originally, what got you into this crazy industry. Give us a little bit of that uh, well, three, four minutes of your story. Born and raised in Dominican Republic, uh, moved out here about when I was 24 years old and I went straight into Michigan. I was, uh, for when I think of home within the United States, it's uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan, which right. you would never say. Um, um, I actually, I was very um, honored to, I'm a graduate from a community college. Uh, most of my mentors are in GRCC, Grand Rapids Community College is my home. I finished my right. home school down there. Um, Chef Bob, um, you know, I have um, Angus Campbell, some of my bigger mentors in there. I'm still one of the ambassadors for my school, um, graduated with honors, and uh, I was the first um, Latina to get the director's awards um, at that point. So I felt like I was already, you know, on the right track of mm -hmm. I love what I do for a living. I've always said I started um, in the food business by necessity. I stayed there because I love it which a lot, a lot of us do that. You know, we start because we need to be in this business. And then you this, you develop this um, kind of a, a passion, love for this, and you just stay, and you don't even know how to do anything else. Um, do you remember the moment that you found that spark for you? Was it a, was it a dish? Was it a mentor? Was it a, a fellow you student? Know, when did you, when did you find me, that spark? Me, um, you know, like we all do, we all through kind of, find ourselves in some sort of a hard times, you know, where you're trying to do that hole, then you can kind of don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I end up in Michigan um, working the farmer's market and I end up making empanadas and actually selling it for a dollar at the farmer's market. Ooh. And one of the things that, you know, I've always feel is that if you bring a little bit of who you were from, I feel like I needed to tell people a little bit of who I was so I made these uh, coconut um, and chicken empanadas, and I made my housemate salsa. And I remember the, the guy in charge of the farmer's market gave me a Sunday, which is kind of a quiet day, and said to me, you know, why don't you make like 200 empanadas? You can come in about 11 o'clock. You know, it's just for some of the, uh, some of the artists are going to be here making your neck necklace and things like that. Mm -hmm. And they need something for food so they don't have to leave. So I remember I, I, you know, I took my little shafers and I fried all day long and I went to the farmer's market at 11 o'clock in the morning and at 12, 15, I turn around and I get home and my mom looked at me and said, what was wrong? And I said, nothing is wrong. I'm sold out. You're gone. <laughs> One hour, $200. So, you know, I think the guy realized, oh crap, you know, this could be, so why don't we bring you on Sun on Saturday where we got 2000 people that comes to the farmer's market. And I have to tell you, I pay my school with that money. I actually was able to support my kids with that money. And I felt that God was trying to tell me something. And, you know, I have a lot of people, a lot of angels behind, you know, in order for you to be a cook, you have to have a, a community to support you out there. There's yes. no other way. And I think that was the day that I found my love for, for everything that I do, because I really felt that it was an exchange of love. I did something with love and then, you know, the food paid me back for sure. That is the perfect story. I kind of want to just end this episode because I don't know that we can say anything <laughs> better than what you just said. It's it's everything. You were able to go from the Dominican Republic to a completely foreign country to the most foreign place potentially within our country. You know, Miami makes, makes sense. There's a lot of Latino culture there. I'm from Southern California. That makes a lot of sense. Grand Rapids, Michigan is not the first place that I think of as a Latina chef. That was 16 years ago. Yes. So, 
you know, at least, you know. And so, and so then you, you said, you know what, I'm not going to shy away from my culture. I want to represent myself, my community, my history, my heritage in a meaningful way. And I'm going to take it to the people. And you went to the farmer's market and they loved it. They accepted you in an hour. It took one hour for them to say, yep. And you're all in. I absolutely love that story. You know, I was there for a whole season and it's really funny because, you know, after I left, everybody felt, oh my God, there is a void for something along that line. I graduated and, you know, of course I was able to go work for the Hilton Corporation in Chicago. They kind of scouted me out of school. And uh, in Chicago, I found a, uh, a food and beverage, uh, of course, and sports company that decided to kind of grab me and say, you know what, we feel that you fit the, the, the package that we're looking for. Um, and I end up in opening a museum. I end up opening a Harley Davidson museum. And one of the things that I can tell you that is so cool about what I feel so, so blessed and lucky is that every city that I've moved, every city that I've been to, remember, I'm a Latina from the Dominican Republic with um, a love for food, with a lot of um, history in terms of family. And then I'm there making buya. You know, I'm there making the best cheese sauce ever, you know, making cheese curds from scratch, you know, mm -hmm. creating things that... I am so thankful because every single city I went, I really sort of kind of gravitated and, you know, now I, I can make the best booyah all over the world, let me tell you. <laughs> so, but you know, that I think that's one of the things that I'm so thankful to be in this country because every single city is like a, a new found uh, a pot of flavors and in, in culture as well. So from there, you know, uh, that's when my, start, my, my, my whole history with the sports and entertainment started. Uh, that company moved me to Minnesota. I started doing hockey again, a Latina, Dominicana doing hockey. It was the coolest thing all over the world. Um, so I did uh, Minnesota uh, in Excel Center, uh, so the Minnesota Wilds. Um, and from there, you know, I ended up doing baseball for the College World Series. Um, Convention Center as well in Omaha, Nebraska, which, by the way, my heart, best city to live. We we loved it. We, we can tell you that we love Miami, but my kids were heartbroken when we moved out of Nebraska. Oh, wow. Yeah, I have some friends in Lincoln and Omaha. Great oh city. Oh, my gosh. Beautiful city. Well, you know, Lincoln is all red, and, you know, when they're, when they're playing – there's nothing else happening anywhere. No, Cornhusker <laughs> is like a religion out I there. Guess, yeah. College football is a religion out there. It yeah, is, it's a religion. So anyway, you know, um, I was very uh, lucky because I feel that this, the, all this, all the other cities uh, prepared me to come to to Miami. And I remember, mm. you know, somebody gave me a call and said, hey, you know, a little bird told me you're, you want to come south. My parents are in the Dominican Republic. And I end up in Miami, I end up uh, playing, you know, being a, one of the chefs for the Miami Heat, which uh, we were, you know, champions. LeBron was magical. Oh, wow. No other place I can tell you I've been besides, you know, my home today that uh, have so much magic as those days. So wait, wait, were you there when the big three walked out and did their whole? Oh, man. That was, that was that is an iconic that. moment in sports and culture. Absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. it was like the Beatles walking out on the stage. It was massive. And that's what it was. So, you know, the goodest thing, the, the, the most awesome thing about uh, those days where um, I came from opening many other properties, you know, uh, I've done derbies. Um, I'm a tennis expert, like you said, you know, I've done Miami Open uh, in, in the, um, New York, in New York as well for many years. I opened Barclays Center, um, Brooklyn. There's nothing like Brooklyn. Oh, yeah. yes. um, and then, you know, coming from all of these cities, doing all this event, it, it made me realize that this, the, the whole, we were changing as an industry. We needed the flavors of the city. We needed to look into the farmers, look into the small businesses, the people, the guy who makes the spice, the guys who make the best donut. Because realistically, financially, and, and in terms of being an operator, you have to understand that you need to continue growing with every city that you yeah. go into it. So by the time that I got to Miami, we created an amazing project called What's Cooking Miami, and we're able to bring chefs and businesses within the arena at that point in time. And again, I think everything I've done was a prelude for me to do the biggest event in the world, which was Super Bowl. And that's why... We were able to do it so well. 
and you know as you know center place at exo set us up to be to help us you know they were such a support system for us as a as you know all the chefs from all over the country that came in again i was just very very lucky to be bringing you know to holding the torch for everybody but um yes. there's you, like we were talking about you can do nothing by yourself and if you do no. it you're in the wrong industry you know we have takes a village people. And, you know and even when we were developing the menu the menu was all about every single culture that exists in my kitchen we are the united nations venezuelans oh. cubans dominicans haitian um we have yes. uh, Russians, you know, I mean, we were from everywhere. So all everything there, every flavor, every every dish, it came from all of those, um, you know, the, for, for me to get, for all of us to get kind of excited about what we were doing. But also, you know, everybody had a little bit into that. And besides that, you know, we looked into how can we help the environment? How can we stay sustainable? How am mm-hmm. I not, you know? destroying a little bit of my planet to do some big event how can i give back to the community and then of course you know the nfl you know the dolphins our partners everybody also believe in what we were doing and that's the big key too believing and you know what you put yeah. on the table you have it's what you say you said what do you say you say when you put something on the table you have to believe it in order to sell yeah. it am i right so i have you got to so here's here's a question that I have. Let's let's dig into that a little bit. You mentioned kind of the thoughtfulness that's going in, the support from from a company like Center Play, which is a massive company, and for you to be able to bring the idea of local and supporting and the, the, the person that makes the best donuts in town, you want people within your venues to be able to experience those things. Talk about that because that's not the expectation that a lot of times we have. When I think about stadium food, I think about concession hot dogs, right? And you are trying to do something completely different and have done something completely different from that. Talk about that, because I think it's an important thing for people to think about. Challenging, I'm sure. Yes. But once you get the buy-in, you're able to do things at a, at a big scale that have a big impact. So talk um, about that a little bit. But I think, it, you know, what I feel that we need to sell to the company, and especially, you know, Center Plate has a big part, you know, Sodexo has a big part, as we are partners, we... We are one company. Um, it's the fact that when we're looking at just serving a hot dog, we, what we think is we are elevating th- that. We are. It's it's about elevating the the service, elevating the food itself, but also looking outside of what you are. Like, mm-hmm. what do you want to be? Do you want to be part of the community, or you want to become just a box in the middle of downtown that does their own thing? And once you become part of the community, remember that's the best marketing. That you can have because yeah. if you go to that taco place down the road that you love so much why would you not come into the stadium and have the same taco that you have down the road you don't have to park you don't have to do anything you can have all all of it inside craft beer great taco great sushi great donut through all that you're still supporting that business that you support outside the stadium because mm. they're inside with us they're there so it's almost like a, it's a, it's a circle of positive and, you know, supporting each other in every way that we go. So I feel that's what Center Place at Exo is really, really, you know, very much. And, you know, with our employees in, as, as well, it's, it's it really helped us to, to push through for not just Super Bowl. We do it before Super Bowl. That's why we yeah. were able to do it so well because we had a plan before Super Bowl. We were supporting a small business. We were doing sustainable stuff. We were working with farms for 250 mile um, kilometers away from me. And, you know, um, even for um, tennis, when, you know, I was already going into, a, uh, I have a farm that was growing all of our greens, all of my arugula and my spinach. And, you know, and, and I think there is a way for you to tell. And I think this new generation, it's okay saying, I want to know where things come from. And yes. You find that, and you know, you find that when you put a fish out there, you know, somebody will call and say, "Is this farm raised?" So this is wild caught. I mean, you're ten years ago, nobody would ever ask you that. Yeah, right. Except yeah. another chef. Exactly. Except another chef. But you know what? And even when it comes to how, to to us, you know, in our stadium, we develop um, our Cubano sausage, and that's another thing we we help in the you know the 
the butchers out there and we go and we tell them what we want and it's something so unique so i feel that we have i've always said we do three things in our stadium we play sports we eat and we drink we play the best sports how can you not have the best food and how can you not have the best drinks so i love that i love that that is such an important statement because you're not you're not feeding to the to the lowest common denominator. You are really trying to get everybody who's in that community that works there and that's coming in and that's part of those teams to like as- aspire to be the best at what you're doing and have a great experience. I think it's also it's, it's a matter of pride. It's a matter of, of mm-hmm. how we elevate what we do. Um, I you know I come. Th- I've done something that is not up to the standards of who I am as a person and also as a chef. Right. And I think that comes the help to your community, the understanding, you know, how can we always put a little good out there, put a little positivity out there. And it always comes back. It's like karma. So I'm a firm believer of that. Always. So you are very much trying to build community within those massive walls that are these stadiums, which sometimes to your point are just like this massive monolith in the middle of a downtown area that seem completely secluded from the rest of the community. It can feel like that. You're trying to take the community as a whole in Miami and bring that inside those walls. So I love that. Co-sign with that all day and you're doing it. You're doing it well. Do you feel a responsibility for your team within your team And then for anybody who comes from Denver, Colorado, or comes from L.A., or comes from Chicago or Minnesota to your stadium to say, this is Miami, like that this is who we are, this is who we represent, and you can encapsulate what Miami is within your three hours, four hours in our stadium. Do you take responsibility for that? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And I think it's not just me. I can tell you that. If you go around the country to any stadium, um, mm. New Orleans, which is ours, or any other outlet that belongs to us as a company, that's what we're doing. It's it all over the country. It's wherever you go, we want you to believe once you walked in there for three hours, that even if you flew in just for that game, you're going to have, at least on my property, you know, you're going to have the best Cubano. I'm going to give you an awesome paella. You know, we're going to be doing uh, tacos from scratch. Well, I'm, you know, you depends on what outlets you are. I mean, we have our own, you have a smoker. We do our own pork butts. It's a, it's a 20 plus hour process. You know, it's we everything we do, it, but you feel it as well. When you taste it, you know, no matter where you come from, if I have somebody from Texas, you're going to tell me that if you're, you taste my pork butts, they're going to be like, oh, well, this is might be, you know, they will feel it. And I, and yes. I think that's what something that is important is the touches. You have to touch everything that you do. For me, it's, it's important. You know, it's, as a chef, I think it's, it's, it's engraved in each and one of us. We are a little bit of a control freak sometimes. So, <laughs> so we all, you know, I walk my areas. I walk my outlets. You know, game day for me is a very, I'm a, I'm a firefighter. I've, I'm always walking and always touching. So for me, that's that's part of what it is. I think I want everybody to feel that I'm there and then they know that I'm there regardless, no matter what you're doing, whether it's in one of the suites, whether mm-hmm. it's in one of the carveries or whether somebody's making, you know, um, I don't know, a, a beautiful, small, you know, a tapa style plate somewhere in one of the clubs. They know that Chef D is always watching and, and supporting. It feels like very much like you're going to push them. You're going to hold them to a high standard and accountability because you take responsibility for that, but still be there to continue to like get the message across. Like why and who before what and how is always something we talk about. And so let's talk about your team and then let's get into the team on Super Bowl. I completely understand everything that you're doing. I think we have a clear message of your vision, the type of experience we're going to have when we come to your stadium, your team, the talks that you had to have saying, we're hosting the Super Bowl. This is a big, big deal. This is the most watched event in the world. What is, what was that like? The immense pressure, the camaraderie, like take us into the galley, take us below decks and say this was how our team was interacting with this moment this opportunity so let me tell you how 
which is kind of crazy. It start this whole thing started for us. I mean, for you know, when I walked in into this job, um, I don't think none of us really realized the whole I'm 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 the woman and all that because for me I'm a chef and you mm -hmm. know I'm very thankful, but I feel that's what it is. Um, with my team, the year before we celebrated, we did uh, Miami Open for the first time in our venue. If you've never done tennis, tennis is you have to really be organize and understand that you're going to be two weeks, put your head down and it gets to be really crazy. So we did tennis. And so when I started the whole Super Bowl conversation, I've always, I told, always told them for me, the fact that we hold each other so well, the fact that we were there for each other, the loyalty that we have for each other, because I've always said people doesn't work for me. They work with me. And that's something that I, it, it's a big thing for me. You know, I, they work with me. We always there. We know that, you know, if, if at some point in time you need me, I'm right by you. But I know that when I need you, you're right by me. And they did such an amazing job for tennis. Um, they hold there. You know, we, we all end up with, you know, we all lost weight. It was, it was such a crazy <laughs> event, but such an amazing event that I felt that when I walked in to say Super Bowl, I said, guys, this is one day. And the fact that it's one day means that you got you already got what it takes to do what we're gonna do right yeah. now. All, but what we need to do right now is to make sure that because we all have what it takes, is to make sure that each and one of the things that we do, we go to the most smallest detail and we make it work. And I've always said, I've always told people, tell me when you need help, not when you are on the weeds, but two hours before so i yeah. think that's how we worked it and we made it really interactive like i told you we really made them feel everything that we did was based on our culture you know we made a whole roasted pig stuff with mm -hmm. coconut rice you know we have beautiful you know um ceviche that we made from scratch we made um um you know, uh, fish is and, and, you know, one of my ladies was actually making my hibiscus, um, for the, for the ceviche. So each and one of them has holds such a pride that I, I don't think I needed to do that much. I just needed to be there with them and make sure that they knew that nobody was going to fall because we needed to do it together. And that yes, just one, one little final taste test. That's all you needed, huh? That's it. You just need to figure it out how to, you know, make it work. And, and I have to tell you, we, we all kind of walked around that date and we all felt like, okay, where's the shoe going to drop? And it never Yeah, <laughs> I and bet. I'm, proud. I'm extremely, extremely proud of my team. I'm extremely proud of all the support from the company, from Centerplay, from Sodexo. And remember, all chefs flew from all over the country to give us support, to be there for us. And like I said, you can do this by yourself. I, I for me, Super Bowl was a, a group effort. We all got together. I just have to, I just, I was just honored to be the first female with an amazing team to do it. That's it. Yeah. What an unbelievable honor, responsibility, and job well done. Give us an idea of the scale and scope of this. Because when you're saying ceviche, I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> How many people work on this project? How much ceviche did you actually have to produce for this thing? Give us an idea, of kind of like break down some of the numbers so we can get so some context. The, the ceviche probably is a little bit smaller because we did in some of the very, very high end VIPs. But I'm going to tell you about tuna. I mean, I'm going to tell you about lobster. I'm going to talk. Okay. I mean, we, we flew in around 4,500 uh, lobster tails. Um, <laughs> we, <laughs> we uh, and remember this lobster. We poaching lobster, okay? This is not cooked lobster. We are poaching all this lobster. There's a joke. One of my chefs, one of the chefs that can support us, um, it's uh, the chef from uh, from New Orleans and uh, from the Mercedes Benz, and, uh, <laughs> and he said to me because he, you know, we were all in there, and he really took the lead to do all, you know, to start poaching lobster. So he looked at me and said, "Well, you know." Um, they're going to have the Super Bowl. I think it's not this year, but the year after, or I think in two more years. He said, well, I'm going to do a lot of crawfish, chefs, so get ready. <laughs> so <laughs> this is probably my job. You're, you're <laughs> on crawfish station, I'm huh? I'm on crawfish, yeah. Because, this, you know, so those were some of the really beautiful camaraderie that we felt, you know, even though it was, you know, 4,000 tells that we're, love, you know, poaching. Um, we're looking at, I don't know, you know, think about uh, pork butts. 
um, think about, we also did um, a beautiful um, Latino porchetta, and we stopped them up with a trifungal, which was, you know, green plantains, yellow plantains, and cassava or yuca fries, uh, and it was yeah. outstanding. So think about porchettas and think about 2,000 porchettas. Think about we made it from scratch. Think about we, you know, we score them, we season them, we tie them up, we stuffen them up. We, I mean, think about just that uh, on a scale of, wow. you know, we have 250 cooks in, in some of the kitchens, chefs, we have about 200 and so, plus the whole building, by the time they were done with concessions, volunteers, we have about 22,000 employees just kind of up and running working tailgates we have 10 gates for 10,000 15,000 outside so it was a very well executed event it was an amazing event it was a lot of work it took us a year to put a lot of pieces together and we still remember Super Bowl is about the teams so we there's certain decisions we cannot make up to the point where we know who the teams are going to be. So oh, that's yeah. another of the challenges. People don't realize. I mean, I can make all the menus that I want for tailgates, but I don't know who the teams are. You want to give them a little bit of their home when they're coming in. You want to have a little flair of, you know, the Kansas City. You know, you want to have San Francisco being in the house as well. So you had sort of kind of made a little square box and say, okay, maybe I do this, this, and that. Yeah. So maybe I don't do this. And then through the playoffs, you keep whittling it down. Like, okay, yeah. now we don't have to worry about this dish yeah. or that dish. But I like it because Kansas City, you're already good with smokers and you're already good with seafood. So you're like, I know how to do these things. I know how to cook for Kansas City and San Francisco. I love it. Absolutely. But again, you know, it's about people need to realize too, there's a lot of logistics that goes behind it. So it's about how you order you feel, about how it's come in. And remember, when we do Super Bowl now, you know, the buildings sort of kind of get taken away from us because it's really the NFL building. You know, it's actually the Super Bowl building. Mm -hmm. So we, we we have to work to certain, you know, certain. Um, but again, we roll with the punches and we kind of make it work. And, and it was an amazing, amazing event. Absolutely amazing event. So great. Your team, how many total? Tell me the numbers again. Is that you we brought people in? or chefs. Uh, and okay. you know, working, and by the time they were done, between two thousand to twenty five hundred people working within the food and beverage industry inside the building. That's amazing. Let's take a moment right now because I want you to share this video with every single one of them. Talk to them for thirty seconds. Why are they so important to the success of everything that you're trying to build? Uh, you know, there's two people that hold me down through this, Chef Javier, Chef Ramon, um, I have Chef Orlando, Chef Carmen. Um, I mean, I can name so many people, but I feel that the strength that they give me is what makes me unstoppable, that I could never do this by myself. Their strength is my energy and their support, but also they trusted me. And the trust is, what, again, what makes me feel... Yes. Again, like I can do anything and they really put some something so important in my hands, you know, and, and it takes, I think it takes a big leader to be able to say, here you go. And then I think it's trickled down. I do the same thing with, you know, my Eric Piners, you know, um, Andrea, Andres Arreola. There's so many people, uh, so many of our chefs that came in that I was like, here's my club. This is what I want you to do. This is my vision. I love you. I'll see you later. And then I got, you know, to the next place, to the next thing that we did. And I think it was absolutely, absolutely amazing. But again, remember, they trusted me and that allowed me to trust other people. And then I think that's all I have to say. Thank you. That's it. That is that is everything. You just said everything. Trust and confidence in your people. You work for them. I think it's something clearly that you represent very well. So Chef D., Thank you so much for the work that you're doing, for the way that you go about your work, for even for me, redefining my expectations. The next time I go to a baseball game, a football game, a soccer game, a hockey game, I'm leveling up. My expectation is higher. And I'm like, you know what? Check out what Deanna De La Cruz and her team is doing in Miami if, if you need to up your game because I think it's important. <laughs> Thank you for the trust. So, I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for taking some time. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Ciao.
stadium food leveled up. Andrew Parr, I love it. I saw I saw your comment. He is uh, he is a brand ambassador. I think. Are you getting paid as for what is it called? Secret. Hold on, I gotta look at this name. I love I love this secret stadium sauce. One more shameless plug for Milwaukee's secret stadium sauce. It's so interesting how iconic the foods that we grow up in in ballparks are to us. I think of growing up and being a kid, going to my very first Dodgers game in Chavez Ravine when Ramon Martinez, Pedro Martinez's older brother, and Pedro were playing for the Dodgers. He's the pitcher. We go really early. My Aunt Janie and, you know, batting practice type early. We get the blue plastic giveaway glove of the day. Changed my life forever. And we had Dodger dogs. And let me tell you, they are garbage. I'll admit it. They're not a good hot dog, yet they're still so a flavor of memory. And that sense of memory, I think, is important. I also really appreciate this. Leveling up the food that we have access to, community within within those giant four walls, so to speak, I think is really important. And I loved seeing just the joy and exuberance that her, her team had throughout the, the Super Bowl and continues. And I think they're representing really well. Massive challenges, I'm sure, to be able to produce the amount of food that they do, the expectations of the end consumer, all of these things at play. But I wanted to highlight that there's real humans doing real work, 4,500 lobster tails, and hundreds of porchettas. I think it's amazing. So appreciate the conversation. Tomorrow's episode, Saturday. I think we're almost done with June. The 30th, Saturday, May 30th. No, we're almost done with May. We're into June. People, I always flub this up. Uh, maybe I do it on purpose just to try and have a shtick. But anyway, Saturday, tomorrow, noon mountain time, 1 p.m. in Chicago, which is where DeAndre Carter is from, Soul and Smoke. And really wanted to have him on because of the work that he's doing specifically with the Trotter Project out there. Amazing stuff that they're doing to feed their communities. So DeAndre going to be on. He also was a, uh, a chef as part of the Moto team. And when we talked to Derek Hole, the CEO of the Trotter Project, we got to memorialize a little bit. Uh, Charlie Trotter, as well as Amara Kantu, who was the chef owner of that restaurant and a uh, protege of Charlie, who also unfortunately took his life. And there's a lot that needs to be discussed about mental health within our industry. And check out Sunday, Best Served High, H-I-G-H, Hospitality Industry Good Health is a channel for that. So I want to give a plug to that as well, because we need the kind of support that the industry is showing to each other, showing to our communities at this time. And we need more of it for ourselves because we are very good at taking care of others and we struggle sometimes to take care of ourselves. So I don't know why I went to a somber place right there, but I'm inspired by the, the way that we're supporting each other. I want to see more of it. That's actually what it is. So cheers. <laughs>